we are making an, an animal. We're using air dry clay. Our emphasis is on form, right? We're on our form element of art. So here we are learning the elements of art. We've learned shape, line, and now we're adding form. So when I say that this must be an animal and it must show form, what I'm saying is don't take your clay, flatten it down to like a cookie and then cut out a shape of a turtle or cut out a shape of a dog. That would not count as form, right? A flat cookie doesn't really emphasize form. It still looks flat. So we really wanna build it up. How do we build it up? We add a head, we have a body, we have an added tail, ears, eyes, feet, right? All of those added features raise it from the surface of our table and make it look like a little mini sculpture sitting on the surface of your table, which again then reads as form, correct? Makes sense, right? Okay, you have two videos here that show you kind of how to build form. She has other things that she's showing that we don't have, but the overall understanding of these videos is for you to use them to understand how to start with a body, then a head, then details. So there's a video one, there's a video two. If you've been absent, don't know what to do, still feel lost, you can use those videos as a reference, okay? Now, <clears throat> the assignment, remember, the emphasis is on form, so nothing flat. You're making a three-dimensional artwork. So again, nothing flat, three-dimensional. It must be an animal. I'm okay with it being a, um, if you wanna add dragon to the list of animals, I'm okay with that. A couple kids have asked me if they could do a dragon, and I said yes, because it's got enough really cool details like fangs, wings, you know, it, it's got, a tail, it's got things that would still read animal and where you're still needing to sculpt and add lots of detail for us to know that it's a dragon, okay? So if you wanna do that, I'm okay with that even though it's not a real animal. So going into adding like wings and tails and, and fur and those kinds of things, you wanna add your texture while it is still moist, right? Where it's still pliable for you to add those textures. You can also paint textures on later after it dries and you go into painting. We need to let the animal dry at least 24 hours. So if you made your animal the last time we met, if you've made it within the last time we met, so today's Friday, if you met it, if you made it on Tuesday or if you made it on Wednesday and it's been sitting and now it's dry and hard, you can paint with me today. If you didn't make it yet, then today you're using class time to make your animal, okay? And how you're going to start that animal is I've asked you to start with a drawing. I asked you to post the drawing on Padlet. So if you haven't done that, you're gonna do that first. Then I asked you to start with a body, then a head. And the reason for that is because the body will determine how big the head is because of the proportions, right? You don't wanna start with a head and then go to a body. You start with the biggest piece, which is our body, and then it's gonna be the head. Then it's gonna be any flippers, hands, legs, any extra added limbs, right? And then the tail, if it has a tail, and then the face, okay? Then the face, because that's the last part that has the most little detail, okay? So you're gonna go from head to then arms, legs, facial features, and then extra detail, maybe like hair or spots, if it's got polka dots on it, spots or whatever. And you can use tools around your house. You can use paper clips, you can use um, a safety pin, you could use a toothpick. You all right, and then we're gonna use our watercolor paints, which I'm gonna show today, our watercolors on how to, I'm gonna show how to apply watercolor to the air dry clay and things that you need to be careful about and how to actually use the watercolors for this particular project. Because how we paint with watercolor on paper will be completely different than how we paint with watercolor on air dry clay. We're working on the emphasis of form. We're making sure that our animals have all their features, right? I've made a couple examples here because I need to use them for the different classes. And I have one that's painted and I'm gonna show you how to paint today. Okay, so I'm gonna back up just, whoops, back up just a little bit there. And um, so I have my clay here that I was working with yesterday. Remember that when you're working and you pause and you need to wait um, a day or even a couple hours, or if you're gonna walk away 
to do something else, a chore or something, make sure that you do put it into plastic because it will dry as it's sitting out. It's drying. That's the whole point, right? It's air dry. So if air is touching it, you better bet it's going to be drying. So make sure that you constantly wrap it up and keep it under control. Okay, so one of the things Jason was asking about was building his animal with his legs, right? So yesterday I had his little legs here for my elephant. So the first thing you are going to start with is the body because that's going to give you the proportion for the head and the legs and everything else. Okay, so the first thing we're starting with is the body. So if you want to do it with me, if you want to do it with me, now is a good time to do it with me, right? So go ahead and make your body. I'm squeezing the clay just to make sure that it's all together one piece because I had pieces that I had put together. So all the little pieces, I'm just making sure that they're all blended, squeezing them together so I don't have a bunch of broken pieces or lines or cracks later. I obviously will have cracks because that's just how air dry goes, right? We did talk to talk about that. That air dry will have cracks at the end, but I'm trying to minimize them by doing things that I know will help the surface, okay? So go ahead and open up your clay and get started in making our little body here. Okay, go ahead and open up your clay and get your little body made. Okay, so here's a little body that I've made. I'm gonna roll that out just a little bit so it's more of a cylinder and less of a ball. Okay, so I'm rolling it so it's more of a cylinder and less of a ball. And then I'm gonna taper one side, which means squeeze it so it gets skinnier on one side. Okay, so it turns into more of like an egg shape or an oval, okay? All right, and then I'm gonna flatten that out just a little bit. Okay, so I have this kind of ovaly shape that I've made. That's gonna be good enough for the start of my body, okay? The next piece, if I just take this big piece, look how big that head would be, right? It's almost bigger than the body, so that's not the right proportion. So I'm gonna take a little piece off of that, a little piece off of that, and I'm gonna start to knead that, which is me, which I mean um, is like squeezing it, right? Getting that kneaded together. Knead that clay together to get all the cracks and pieces blended. So it's a nice solid piece with very little cracks and openings and pieces maybe falling off, get it really nice and blended. And then if I just stick it on, it's gonna fall off, right? Because it doesn't have any kind of glue or stickiness to it. So I need to use my paintbrush and my water. So here I have a little dish with a little bit of water. I have my tiny paintbrush that I'm gonna use. You all have one in your art kit. Use your paintbrush and wet the little back of the head, okay? Wet the neck area of the body where you're gonna attach it. So I'm just, I'm massaging that water so it starts to get sticky. If you touch it, you'll feel that it's really sticky, okay? And then I start to kind of twist these together. So kind of like give it a little bit of a shimmy, a little bit of a twist. So that way they are stuck together. And then I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm gonna just paint around the seam to hold that head on to make sure that it did glue together, okay? So I paint around the seam to make sure that it did glue together just to ensure that everything is sticking, nothing's gonna fall off later. If things do fall off while they're drying, just use some white Elmer's glue and glue it back on. If you don't even have white Elmer's glue, you could even use a glue stick, okay? These will become so light that a glue stick glue would even work that you use with paper, that would work too. Okay, so I'm making his little beak. And notice that I pinch out from existing clay. I like to use all one piece to pinch out like shapes from it rather than add small shapes that could possibly fall off later. So that's just my own like knowledgeable kind of background knowing that like if I put more if I put little pieces all over this the more likely they are to fall off so if I can use from the structure itself it's from one piece and it doesn't have a seam which may become a problem later right 
So I'm just trying to make sure I got everything blended, everything's together, and um, he's starting to look pretty good, right? Got a little kind of birdie looking piece here. Okay, I'm going to make sure that his body starts to look kind of, I'm going to go ahead and use the back side of his body for his little tail. So I'm just starting to pinch out like a little tail shape here. Okay, little tail shape. So again, I'm using what I have already with the existing clay to pinch out the shapes that I want. Now, if you didn't leave yourself enough clay and you need to add pieces, that's fine too. I will add a wing on both sides and I will add the feet, right? Because I can't pinch those things out from the surface. So I will be adding those, okay? So you're working with me in whatever animal you're building. You build what you need to build, but at least this gives you an idea of how to get started. Okay, so here's my little birdie. Looks pretty okay, right? All right, so I'm gonna set him down and I'm gonna use these smaller pieces. I'm gonna use these smaller pieces to make some wings on him. So his wings wouldn't be super fat, would they? Because they're just wings and wings are very skinny or thin. So if I add this wing, look how thick that wing is. That looks more like a flipper. So that's not gonna be correct in proportion. So I wanna make sure that I thin that out. So I'm gonna squeeze that a little bit more, pinch off some of it, cause I don't need all of that. Okay, and I'm gonna just make sure that I have the right shape for my wing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, and check it again on my body here and see if I added that, that would be more an appropriate wing. That looks about right. He's not too heavy looking and it looks like it fits pretty good on the body. Okay, so again, to add that, I need to add some water to the body where I'm placing it. I'll add some water to the back of the wing. Okay, and I'm just painting that water on using my paintbrush. I'm not pouring water on or making it too wet. Okay, and then once I do that, once I add my wing, look at my little wings there, I'm gonna use my paintbrush again around the seam, yeah? because I need to stick that on. So I make sure that my seam is nice and blended and waters between them because that makes it sticky like glue and it will hold on. Especially now that I've added a piece, added pieces have the opportunity to break off later if you don't do them right. So make sure you're doing enough water between the connection and blend that seam, okay? So that I have a wing on one side because this is a form we need to add a wing to the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay him down a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna lay him down facing up so I can see the wing. So as I make the other wing, I can match that a little bit. I'm gonna prop him up with another piece I have here. Okay, so again, check your thickness or thinness of the item you're making and is it in proportion to what it would look like if it, this was a real animal. This is a wing, not a flipper, so it can't be super thick and they, now that I'm making him symmetrical with two wings, they need to match. Do you see how my wing is too fat right now? The second one, I have to change that and thin that out. So again, I know you're not all making birds, but you hear what I'm saying and you're hopefully taking that information and transferring it to what you're making in front of you. Okay, so it, so it works to work for what you're trying to make making sure that you're meeting the proportions of the animal the best you can. You're using water to attach your pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna put some water on both pieces and I'll stick that wing on. Stick the wing on. And then I'll check to make sure that I have them symmetrical. So I'll look at him from the front view and make sure that he looks pretty symmetrical. Make sure the backs look pretty symmetrical with my tail and the back side and the two wings. Make sure that you don't forget, I almost forgot to go around the seam of the second wing. So it's all blended and connected. How are we gonna get this guy to stand and not fall over? Well. Let's take a look. 
I think the first thing I need to do is create the foot pad, the actual foot itself, and then I'll do the legs. So I need two kind of foot pads here. And these might need to be a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker than reality, just because of the weight of the clay of the bird, right? Bird's feet are very, very thin, little wire looking things, right? But for this case, I might have to exaggerate or make a little bit of a cartoon foot because of what material I'm using. And that's okay. You got to do what you got to do to make this work. And in making this work, I might need to have some bigger feet. It's going to be a bird with big feet. And who knows? Maybe there are birds with big feet out there. We just don't know. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use those feet to see if I can get... And then, of course, my legs, they can't just be little wires. They've got to be kind of thicker because they need to be a structure that holds up this bird. So um, he is going to have some thicker legs than usual, but it'll be okay. We'll, we'll paint them accordingly and it'll look like a bird with legs. Okay, so let's get that going. So I'm going to roll out. I'm going to first squeeze the clay because I did bring in pieces of clay together. And I'm just going to roll it kind of into a little baby cylinder. Okay, just between my fingers, rolling it into a little baby cylinder. And then I'm going to attach it to this little foot pad. So the foot pad is just a pad. I haven't decorated it or cut into it to make it look like a bird's foot. It's really, it really looks like just like a little cartoon foot. And that's because I'm going to cut into it later when I give the details. Remember that we give the details after we build. I'm going to zoom in just to right there so you can see it a little bit better of what I'm doing. So again, I'm rolling between my fingers these little mini cylinders using water on the little foot pad that I made and the cylinder and putting them together. Again, making sure that you kind of twist them together a little bit so they stick push that cylinder down into the foot pad so it actually does stick on there becomes one with it and then i'm gonna have to oh, my hands sticky so it's sticking to my hands here and i'm gonna have to put the bird on there and again this bird these legs are maybe a little too tall so i'm gonna have to adjust those so after looking at what i've made i've realized they are a little tall so I'll use a little knife here. It's just a little plastic knife that I have. And I'm just going to cut them in half, get some of that length off of them. They're too tall. So we'll get that length off. We'll go ahead now and wet the bottom of the bird and see if we can get these legs and feet attached without it completely falling over or becoming a problem, which it looks like he's got boots on right now. I'll do some fixing. I think he's going to fall over if I don't put him in the right spot. I think with the thicker legs, maybe this is more of a chicken. <laughs> I guess I could have tucked the legs underneath and had him sitting on the table, right? But I like the idea that he's standing up. Okay, so I have my legs on there and they are much bigger than they should be. Look, it looks like he's got boots on. So for right now, I'm just going to make sure they are attached and then I will thin them out just a little bit so it looks a little bit better. But I'm going to have to keep them somewhat thick because if I don't, he's not going to stand. So I'm going to take my little tool here, my little my little knife and I'm just going to take some of the weight off of the leg and spread it out onto the foot and make kind of those foot pads a little bit bigger and then closer together so he stands up and I got to balance him so I got to tip him maybe forward or back so he stands a little bit up so he's standing up now he looks like this from the back side from the sides of him. He looks like that. And I'm going to make sure he stands up, which he does. 
And then um, I'll do some blending in just a second. I'm gonna let that water kind of soak in just a little bit. In the meantime, I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna work on this elephant that I started yesterday. We are going to talk about painting our animals. And we have watercolor paints, right? Everybody has a palette in their art kit. Looks like this. Hold on, I think my camera is zoomed in. Let me unzoom that, there we go. So you have a watercolor palette. It looks like this, okay? When you open it up, it does come with its own paintbrush. This paintbrush is very large. So I know it doesn't look that big, but when you try to paint something super small like this little mini sculpture, it's gonna be problematic because it's too too uh, big. So don't use that paintbrush. You have, you have uh, three other paintbrushes in your kit that I gave you. One of them should be the tiny, tiny, it might be square, it might be pointed, but whatever one is the tiniest, the smallest paintbrush that I've given you, that's the one that you're working with. Okay, that's the one that you're working with. Now, yesterday, with my other classes, I painted my little penguin here. Okay, I painted the little penguin, and um, he's you know black and white. The white part is just the clay. I don't have white paint here. You can see I don't have white paint. So whatever is supposed to be white, you just leave unpainted, and you're gonna paint from light to dark. So what it, that means is you start with the lightest color in the list of colors you're going to use. So in this case, it was the orange, right? Orange is lighter than black. And then you use the, the darkest color last. So I did the orange, I did the blue, and then I did the black last, okay? As you're painting, one of the concerns I have is making sure that you're not using too much water. Also, also, you're not, um, transferring the paint all over the sculpture, meaning your hands are staying clean. So if you accidentally get paint on your hands or your fingertips, make sure you wipe it off before continuing, before continuing to um, paint, okay? So you have some sort of napkin, right? Some sort of napkin or paper towel as you're working, you have a container with water, okay? You have a container with water. So this is my setup, I've got my little animal that I'm gonna paint. I've got my water here. I've got my napkins, all right? And you know, I've waited long enough that my, my animal is hard, okay? If it's not hard, if it hasn't become hard, then you need to wait. Like that one's not, that one's not dry enough. My turtle, he's not dry enough. Well, maybe, let me see. Yeah, he's dry-ish. So my turtle, I'm gonna show you, has lots of detail. Okay, see the little details that I did, the texture that I did on his feet. Let me see if I turn on the light. Maybe you see that better. Mm, made it brighter now. Okay, I'll turn that back off. 
So what I was saying earlier about the pen is I use this pen. See how the pen, when the tip of the pen, see when it's out like that to write with, when I put the pen back in, it creates a little tool that has a hole. And if I use that on the clay, it creates a really cool texture of like little bumps little bumps on the surface of the turtle's legs. Do you see that? Okay. And then I use, I have this little plastic knife. You have a plastic knife, <clears throat> excuse me, left over from your, uh, you know, to go food or anything like that. Or even if you have a metal knife, like a butter knife that works too. And that's what I used to indent his shell. So the design that's on his shell, I used this little plastic knife and again, use whatever tools that you have around to do all of the little drawing that I did on his shell. And then, you know, he's got a little eye and I did a little mouth. Okay. And how I built him was I built his head and his body together. And then I flattened out some clay and made a top shell and a bottom shell, kind of like a little hamburger, right? And he's got his little legs sticking out. So that's how I made the turtle. You saw me make the penguin, correct? That's what we made together. Okay. So let's, let's continue painting the penguin. Let's talk about how I use my watercolor paints. Okay. You can see I've already done the feet, right? We're going to do light to dark. So we already did the feet. So let's talk about how we set up our paints. Whatever color you're going to use for your paint, you're going to take a little bit of water with your brush and you're going to make a little teeny puddle in there. So take your water, make a little teeny puddle, just a little puddle, okay? Not a whole bunch because we don't want this to be too wet. If it's too wet, it's going to be dripping all over this little animal, right? The other thing that the paint is going to kind of do is remember how when you lay a Sharpie on a piece of paper and the ink moves, it kind of grows or bleeds out a little bit? The, the paint on the surface of this will kind of do the same thing, okay? So you got to be prepared that when you touch the surface, it may move a little bit fatter than you think, grow a little bit. So I'm going to put some black in here or water in the black, a little bit of black because I'm going to need that. Okay. And I'm starting just, <coughs> excuse me, just with a little bit of water, just with a little bit of water. Okay. Any questions yet? Okay. So I'm going to start on the back side of him. And I'm gonna notice this is this is my routine. So I put water in my paint, right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rinse my brush, make sure it's clean. My brush is dripping right now. That's too wet. So I'm gonna dab onto my paper towel, take off the drip, okay? It's still moist, it still feels wet, but it's not dripping. If it's dripping, that's gonna be a problem because then it's gonna drip all over where I don't want it. I'm gonna take a little bit of paint from the palette, okay? Make sure I wipe the brush so it's not dripping. If I'm holding my brush like this and it's dripping all over the place, then I have too much water, right? Too much water. So notice nothing's dripping. All right, and then I'm gonna start to paint the surface. All right, paint the surface. Okay, make sure that you get in all the cracks. When your clay dries, it will crack. Remember we talked about that. There'll be little cracks, that's okay. You paint the whole surface. As you're holding this and you're painting it, you're gonna get paint on your finger. When you get paint on your finger, rinse your finger off and wipe it off because again, you don't wanna transmit all of that paint over to its face or wherever you don't want it, do you, right? So continue to paint the surface. Be very careful that you don't get it somewhere you don't want it. Okay, so keep painting the surface. Any questions yet? I'm gonna keep going. Okay, so let's say I'm painting, I painted the bottom of his feet orange. Let's say I'm painting, I accidentally get paint like that, where I don't want it. Okay, you can erase watercolor. You can erase watercolor by taking a clean wet brush. So clean your brush off. Okay, now it's just clean. 
I have clean water over here. So for just to make life easier, have one container that has clean, 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 or clean water and one container that you're painting with. See how my water has become now blackish orange? You don't wanna use that as your clean water. So I have clean water over here. So watch how I erase that black line. Clean water, okay? And I just wet the surface, go back to the clean water. Clean water, paper towel, so now it's not dripping, and I wipe it off. Look at that. The orange and the black came off. So if you make a mistake, if you make a mistake where the color goes somewhere you don't want it to, use clean water on your paintbrush and erase it off, okay? So you put water, dry your brush, use your dry brush to wipe off the wrong color that you don't want. Does that make sense? Did everybody see that? And then I can put my orange back on. Okay, look, fix the problem. I got orange feet, no black on the orange. And I go back to my black here. I got a little white edge. I gotta make sure that that's covered black. So again, if you make a mistake and you get the color, the wrong color in the wrong space or it drips or whatever, fix it by using clean water and your brush and erase it. Okay, now, Let's talk about, I'm gonna let this sit and dry just a second while we talk about something. What if I need a color that's not in this palette? What if I need gray? What if I need gray? We don't have gray, do we? Like my elephant, he's gonna be gray. So how do I make my elephant gray? Well, typically you would have black paint and add white to it, right? Black and white would make our gray, true? Okay. Well, I don't have white paint. So how we control the values, because black and white added together is a value, right? That's how we, we get a value of gray, different grays, right? How we control values with the colors in watercolors is we add water. So the thinner the black with water, the lighter the black will be, and it will read as gray. I also, to my advantage, am working with a white background, right? So the white background of the elephant will help lighten the black. So let's make some gray. Take the black over to your palette. See how I'm in the palette now? The lid of the palette here? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and I'm gonna take some water and I'm gonna thin this out. I'm gonna thin this out, okay? It looks like I'm not doing much and it looks still pretty black. It's gonna take a while with this small brush. <laughs> but I'm gonna thin this out. Let me see what color this is. Whoop, you can't see it. There, that's what color that is. So this puddle that I made, this is what color that puddle is. It will dry lighter than what I see as well. Plus I'm gonna put it on the white clay. So let's see, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. So let's put this on here. If it's too dark, add some water to thin it out. If you put it on, you're like, whoa, that's too dark. Yeah, grab some water and stretch that application out. And again, we know how to erase. So if it's completely wrong, I can erase this color all off of there by taking clean water and erasing it, right? I'm gonna take some water and I'm gonna blend that in a little bit. Oh, it looks, it looks totally different on the camera. It's picking up all the texture. So on the camera, it looks really messy, <laughs> but in person, it doesn't look that bad. Okay, so we'll let we'll let that dry a little bit because in the camera, it's making it look kind of messy, kind of ugly. But in real life, it doesn't look that bad. It looks pretty good. It's looking nice and gray. 
He looks a little wrinkly like he would in person, right? His his clay or his texture of his real body. Okay. So again, if it's too dark, add a little bit of water to it, thin it out. He is going to get a little sticky again by adding the water, just like what we did when we uh, built him. So if you need to set it to dry a little bit before you add more, right? So I'm going to let him sit and kind of rest and I'll go back to my penguin. Okay, whoops, my animals fell down. Okay, let's go back to the penguin here and we'll get our black from the palette because I want straight black. I don't want gray for him. Straight black. Now some questions that came up. Can I use more air dry clay if I have some at home? Like if I already have some part of my little art kit that I have at home that I own. Yeah, you can make a bigger animal. If you have more air dry clay and want to make a bigger one, go for it. Also, another question was, if I don't use all of the air dry clay for one animal, can I make more animals? Can I make two animals? Absolutely. Why not? I would make two animals and then I would turn in the one that turned out the best. Right? So again... Whatever works best for you. Now, if you make an animal that looks like a disaster and doesn't read as your animal, you need to ball up your clay again and start again. And I'm going to show you what I mean in just a second. All right. <laughs> I think I got too close to his belly. That's okay. I'm going to go across this part. I didn't do that on my other one, but that's okay. All right. So his body is done. I'm going to wait for that to dry before trying to go onto the head because I want to be able to hold him without getting black paint all over my, my hands. Okay, my elephant, he's still pretty tacky, so I'm going to let him dry. The last thing I want to show you is when you're done with your piece, how to take a photograph of it. How do we photograph three-dimensional pieces? Because I just was talking about that two seconds ago about not laying it down. So when you photograph your animal, you're not going to lay it down like this and take a photograph of it, okay? You're going to get to a clean page. I'm gonna move my animals. You're gonna get to a clean page, all white page. You're gonna set your animal up just like this, okay? You're gonna take your camera, which in most cases is your phone. You're gonna take your camera, okay? And maybe if I can get my phone to open. Okay. So if I take it, if I take a picture like this, if I take a picture like this, hold on, let me open your, your window a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing. If I take my picture holding my phone like this, do you see in my phone? Take a look. Everybody should be watching. Okay. So if you're building, if you're painting, pause for a second. Can you see in my phone here? how the background right there is this, right? So I don't want to take a picture where I get the, the junk in the background, okay? How do I take a picture if, so if I take a picture of that, this is what my picture looks like. That's my picture on my phone, right? That's unacceptable because I've got this background junk in my picture. I don't want that right? I just want the animal. So if that happens, one way you can do that is you can go to edit it, right? I can edit that and I can crop out everything, but the animal, right? And then look, that's the photograph I'm sending to Mrs. Doles, right? I don't have background. I don't have shadow. I've got just a perfect little animal sitting there. 
that she can see and it's nice and big and cropped, right? Another way you can do it is you can have your phone like this, bring your animal nice and close, zoom in, take your fingers and zoom in, tap on it so it focuses, okay? See my animal in my screen there? Center him and then take the picture. So now this is what I have. I don't have to edit that. He's already in a solid white background because I zoomed in and just got paper and the animal. So either you edit it where you have the animal and just the paper or you take the photo, just the animal and the paper. So that is how you're going to photograph your three dimensional sculpture and turn it in. Now, if you've got lots of different side views, like different things that I should see, like for this cat, it's got a tail and more information that I need to see for this to read as a full sculpture. So I'm also going to take a picture of the side. So I have a picture of what he looks like from the front. I got a picture of the side, okay? And I and because I wanna get an A+, I'm gonna also take a picture of the back of him so Mrs. Doles can see all of the really nice details that I took right, that I did, look it. I have all these really nice details of fur and color, so I want her to see that. So I did the back, I did the side, and I did the front, and that's what I'm gonna turn in as my assignment of form to show that this has height, width, depth, a front, back, side, and everything, okay? Does everybody understand how to photograph their three-dimensional work and get it turned in? Okay. All righty. That's how we're gonna do that. Because again, this is this assignment will be posted for you to turn in when you're done. And that could be any time between now and when I meet with you again on December 1st. 